Hi all, this is Anjali and today we are going to discuss some important Viva questions for my SQL for the practical board exam for class 12 IB. So as in the last video we have discussed some important questions that can be asked about Java. Now we are going to discuss some important questions which can be asked by the examiner about SQL. So very basic question about SQL is like what is the difference between DML and DDL command. So it's very simple question but asked a number of times. So DDL and DML commands as you know are data definition language and data manipulation language. But when you are asked like what is the difference, how would you answer the examiner? You have to tell examiner like DDL is data definition language command which uh, has commands uh, related to the structure of the table like when I have to create a table, I have to modify its structure, I have to delete the table, so I have commands in DDL. But if I have to work with the data inside the table, we have DML for that, that's data manipulation language. So DML is having the commands to work on the data stored in the table like inserting new data, deleting existing data or modifying the data. That is the difference between DML and DDL. Then it can be asked, name any two DBMS. The DBMS which you are using in your syllabus is MySQL. That's a database management system. But there are other databases as well, like we have Oracle, we have DBase, we have SQL Server. So the major two DBMS are MySQL and Oracle. So you can answer these two. Then if it is asked, name any two DDL commands. Just name any two DDL commands confidently. There are so many of them. You can answer create table, alter table, drop table, truncate table. So just name any two out of these. Then name any two DML commands. Again, we have four DML commands. That's insert, delete, update, and select. Name any two out of this. Okay, now this is an important thing. Any of these four keys can be asked. You can be asked like what is a primary key or what is a candidate key, any of these. Now, as you know, primary key is that attribute of the table which is used to uniquely identify a row in a table. So we can answer like primary key is that column which is always unique and not null means it cannot have duplicate values and it cannot be left blank and it is used to identify one row in a table. For example, admission number for a student, account number for a bank account, something like this. And then when we talk about candidate keys, if it is asked what are candidate keys, so when we have to make a primary key, we need to see which attributes can become a primary key. So the attributes which have the features of becoming a primary key are called candidate keys since they are candidates for becoming a primary key. Then alternate key are those keys which are left after choosing one primary key out of the given candidate keys. So if I have four candidate keys option and I choose one of them as primary key, the other three attributes would be called alternate keys. Then we have foreign key. So foreign key is a special attribute which is used to link two tables. So when I have to establish a link between two tables, we use foreign key for that. So these are few basic questions about SQL. Now specific to DDL commands, it can be asked like differentiate between CAR and var CAR data type. It's an important question both from the practical as well as theory point of view. We have these two data types for storing characters only, but the main difference is that CAR is a fixed length storage for characters and varchar is a variable length storage. Although the maximum size is fixed in both of these, char 20 means you can store maximum 20 characters in it, varchar 20 means you can store maximum 20 characters in it. So that is the similarity. But the difference is in the minimum number of characters. If I have char 20 and I store Anjali in that, Anjali takes 6 characters it will take 14 spaces after that. So it will store Anjali then 14 spaces after that to make 20 as the size. Whereas in varchar it will occupy only 6 characters and rest are free to be used for any other purpose. So the basic difference is that char uses the exact amount of space allocated whereas varchar uses only as much is required. 
and rest is free to be used for another purpose. So that's the difference between CAR and bad CAR. Now what are constraints? Constraints are the restrictions imposed on the columns of a table. This is the definition. So when you have to define it, you will say this, that these are the restrictions imposed on the columns of a table. Now what are constraints? What all constraints we have? So what all constraints we have? We have unique, not null, primary key, default, check and foreign. So any of these constraints you have to explain only when the examiner asks you to do that. Otherwise, just define the constraint and you can name a few. But when the examiner asks you to explain any of the constraints, say primary key or say not null in detail, then you have to explain that. Okay. Now, differentiate between primary key and not null constraint. Now, primary key constraint means that attribute cannot have duplicate values and you cannot leave it blank. Whereas, not null says that you can't leave it blank. So that is a similarity. I can't leave this blank. I can't leave this blank. But primary key has to be unique. We cannot have duplicate values in it. Whereas we can have duplicate values in not null. So it should not be blank, but duplicate is allowed. That's one difference. Second difference could be there can be only one primary key in a table. But not null constraint can be given to as many columns as you want. Then comes difference between primary key and unique. So one difference is the same that there can be only one primary key. Unique can be given to multiple columns. Another difference is that primary key has to be not null as well as unique. It can't be left blank. Unique as the name says need to be unique. It cannot be duplicate. But you can leave it blank. It can be null. You can leave it blank. So that's the main difference between primary key and unique constraint. Then if it's asked, what is the difference between truncate table and drop table? So as truncate table command deletes the table, it only deletes the data. The structure, the empty structure of the table still remains in the memory. So we can add the data again later on in the table. Whereas drop table deletes your table completely from the memory. No data, no structure, nothing is left. So it's all deleted. That is the purpose of drop table. So both are DDL commands. So these were some specific questions about DDL, but we can have few general questions like what is the difference between alter and update? So one major difference is alter table is a DDL command and update is a DML command. Alter table is used to modify the structure of the table and update is used to modify the data stored in the table. Then what is the use of default constraint? Like when we give values for the columns while inserting a row in the table and if I don't give a value for a column, by default it is null. Null means nothing, no value. But if you want that it should not be null, it should have some value by default. As a programmer, I'm giving a value and that should be stored in it. So that is default. For example, I want whenever a student is admitted in school, his class should be nursery. So I can give class where care 10 default is equal to nursery. So by default, a student admitted in the school will have class as nursery. So that's an example for default constraint. Then if it is asked which command is used to arrange data in increasing or decreasing order. Yeah, should know it very well. Yeah, so it should be order by. So this is the easiest command you have to arrange the data in increasing or decreasing order. Order by column name then if it is an increasing we don't need to write anything but if it is in decreasing we write desc to specify that we want to arrange in decreasing order then what is the use of distinct keyword distinct keyword is used to show the repeated values only once when it is fetched with the help of select command so if i write select city from school so it will show city Repeatedly, if it's repeating in the rows, like if five students are from Delhi, so it will show Delhi five times. But I want that if the same value is being repeated, it should be shown only once. So I can write select distinct city from student. So one city will appear only once on the screen. Then what is the use of group by? Group by is very important in SQL and it is used to group those rows which have a similar value for a column. For example, this city only. If I have that 
students from delhi should be grouped into one group students from mumbai should be grouped into one group so we can use group by city and why do we basically group when we have to perform any of the group functions like we have to find the maximum value minimum value sum count or anything like that so if we have to perform a group operation we group on the basis of a column and then we can calculate the result as per that group so that is the purpose of group by a related question with group by is what is the difference between where and having now where is used with normal commands to check a condition and that condition is checked for every row being processed whereas having is used only with group by to check conditions and it can check a condition on a group whereas where checks a condition for every row you have then we have a topic called transactions in mysql so transactions have a very basic question that's the difference between commit and rollback so commit means to save the changes performed by the transactions or by the sql commands and rollback means to cancel the changes made which are yet not committed so once i commit something it cannot be rolled back so once you commit it cannot be rolled back but if it is not committed yet if i write rollback and i execute a delete command so whatever was deleted will come back into the table so commit is to save and rollback is to undo but if it is asked what is a transaction so transaction is a set of sql commands used to perform a well defined task then there is a set of properties called acid properties for transaction so acid properties means atomicity consistency isolation durability atomicity means one transaction is one unit if it's executed then all its parts should be executed completely half execution is not possible consistency means the result which you are getting today you'll get the similar result means the as per the perfection the similar result any time later when you execute the transaction isolation means when one transaction is using a table no other table no other transaction should be using the table at the same time there is durability that code written once will execute even after years so it is durable then what is the use of save points now when i'm writing sql commands i write some insert command then i write delete then i write update but if i have to roll back the last command which i have given if i write roll back so it will not roll back only the last it will roll back all three commands which i gave so we can create save points so save points are like break points in your sql commands you write a command you create a save point then you write another command create another save point so when you have to roll back now you can write roll back to name of the save point so if i write roll back to b so it will roll back only those commands which are done after the save point b in the sql screen so that is the purpose of save points then we have functions we have two type of functions in sql aggregate functions and individual row functions <clears throat> normally we can ask you only this thing like name any two aggregate functions so we have five in total that is sum min max average and count you can name any two out of these and i just hope you very well know the purpose of each of these five and then when we talk about individual row functions there are so many but you should remember the important ones like sqrt for square root round truncate then string functions like length substring left right trim and date functions like day of the week day name and all so just go through the functions video in the previous lectures i have uploaded that in the sql section so if you want to do these functions in detail you can refer to that video hope you understood what can be asked about sql so these are the major questions which are usually asked about sql in the viva so prepare well revise well and all the best for your viva and i'll be uploading the viva questions for your project and your report file very soon stay tuned do like the video and share with your friends thank you